Welcome to our tutorial on op amp circuits part 6 and in this tutorial what we're going to do is that we're just going to introduce you to the concept of the uh, circuit named Schmidt trigger in this tutorial okay so uh, let's just pen it down for the moment yeah that's right that's the Schmidt trigger now the Schmidt trigger circuit that we're going to discuss over here was created back in the year 1937 by the inventor known as OH Schmidt uh, in whose honor basically the uh, circuit has been named so uh, back then uh, O.H. Schmidt you know uh, created the circuit using uh, vacuum tubes only and uh, obviously it must be uh, must have been a, you know a pretty hard time for him you know doing that way so now today we must be you know uh, thankful to the uh, revolution of the semiconductors that have you know revolutionized the electronics industry so that we are just you know able to uh, make the circuit over here as I'm showing you in this tutorial with uh, the op amps okay so um, basically we're doing the same over here in this tutorial and now uh, this is basically the circuit of the Schmidt trigger okay having sorry having a voltage divider over here uh, with the resistances R2 and R1 respectively and now this circuit as you can see over here um, take I mean from the terminal X on the voltage divider basically provides a feedback voltage okay or rather I'll just like to call it the positive feedback voltage you know to be specific uh, to the um, inverting I'm sorry the non-inverting input okay since the feedback voltage is given to the non-inverting input of the op amp okay that's why it's just referred to as the positive feedback okay and now uh, over here at the input terminal which is just you know uh, the uh, non-inverting I'm sorry the inverting input of the op amp we apply a you know sinusoidal type of uh, time varying input signal Okay, so now this circuit uh, basically, you know, uh, serves as a comparator, okay, much more superior and uh, better than that of the open loop normal type of comparator that we had, you know, I mean, discussed uh, previously in our, you know, tutorials on op amp circuits. So now, uh, since this uh, comparator circuit, as the Schmidt trigger is actually, uh, employs a positive feedback for its operation, it's also, I mean, better known as a regenerative comparator so the term regenerative you know uh, just um, signifies the fact that a positive feedback is just employed by the circuit for its operation so just keeping that in mind if we just you know um, name uh, the feedback voltage as being you know provided to the non-inverting input as you know VF then we might just suggest that the uh, magnitude of the VF that we can see from this um, circuit is given by you know um, VOR1 by R1 plus R2. If you just you know and analyze the circuit carefully, you'll see that this uh, feedback voltage magnitude is just nothing but the voltage across the resistance R1 over here. So in this case, as uh, we can see that uh, the um, you know the output voltage of the op amp, you know, I mean of any comparator basically uh, can remain either at the positive or the negative saturation voltage levels. So now this feedback voltage level actually you know. Uh, also serves as a you know uh, reference voltage level which I'm going to sh going to be showing you over here uh, shortly. So let's just uh, for um, simplicity's sake, in order to you know depict the operational you know mechanism of the circuit, let's just you know assume that the uh, voltage level, um, I mean the output just you know remains at the positive saturation voltage level. So let's just uh, start with this uh, assumption over here so when the output of this uh, Schmidt trigger circuit is at the positive saturation voltage level then the feedback voltage that's uh, I'll just like to call it VF1 in this case which is given by V plus V sat R1 by R1 plus R2 so there it is so we have as you can see the um, positive I mean the uh, feedback voltage levels uh, okay over here at the uh, positive uh, input of this uh, op amp okay so there you go so now um, having this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the VF1 over here if we just you know uh, try and draw a graph okay so if we just you know try and draw a graph to you know depict its operation okay let's just you know make a bigger graph if we just need it in I mean for future purpose okay so now uh, in this graph okay so we have you know uh, just will de depict the input voltage right over here and the output voltage will be depicted over here okay so now if we just you know, take a uh, time varying you know sinusoidal input voltage okay somewhat like this 
okay then um, we were I mean just we're going to have this uh, VF1 okay so as I've shown you over here VF1 as the reference voltage level for comparison with that of the input voltage applied to the inverting input of the op amp so this is basically VF1 okay as, it, as I've just shown you over here so now the output uh, basically as that happens in case of a uh, comparator is that the uh, till the moment the input voltage level that's VI you know is less than VF the output you know remains at the positive saturation voltage level so now now uh, in this case this condition persists till this time I mean to the uh, sorry this is the time axis so to the left of this uh, green dashed line okay the condition persists and so the output stays at the positive saturation voltage level okay so that's plus V set in this case and now t when the moment comes that this uh, uh, you know the input voltage you know increases and it keeps on increasing till it just equalizes and just slightly you know exceeds the value of VF1 that's the uh, reference voltage level in this case okay then the output of this uh, circuit you know, just shoots to the negative saturation voltage level so that's minus V set over here and it remains there uh, for the moment and now uh, what happens is that the situation is just uh, been turned to the fact that the output voltage is a I mean is the negative saturation voltage level so therefore we'd have a different value of feedback voltage over here given by minus V set R1 by R1 plus R2 so having this uh, sort of you know um, feedback voltage uh, over here um, that's the uh, that also serves as a reference voltage right in this case okay so this is basically VF2 as I said so now um, the uh, input of this uh, you know uh, uh, to apply to the circuit over here keeps on you know decreasing 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 till the moment right over here when it's you know uh, its magnitude you know drops below that of VF so as that happens in case of a comparator till the moment I mean uh, when uh, VI would just be you know less than that of the uh, feedback voltage that's VF over here the output would again you know just swing back to the positive saturation voltage level so in this case the output just swings back to the positive saturation voltage level so at this moment over here VI is just less than VF and over here VI becomes greater than that of VF okay no matter how slightly due to the, just due to the open I mean immense open loop gain of this uh, op amp over here the output would just you know swing back to the positive saturation voltage level and again uh, this would just I mean this condition would just you know persist till this moment when again the uh, input voltage would just you know, uh, go on increasing and would just become greater than that of the uh, reference voltage level that's VF over here so in this case the output would again just swing back to the negative saturation voltage level so that's basically how a uh, Schmidt trigger just keeps on functioning and uh, now if we just you know compare its operation with that of a uh, normal or rather simple comparator I mean the simple open loop comparator that we had seen previously um, in the uh, tutorial on op amp circuits so if we just you know have an input voltage that would you know just vary uh, okay a sinusoidal type input voltage that would just you know vary this way okay here's the time axis on both of the input and output uh, you know characteristics and if we just you know have the output of this comparator as you know this way okay with a reference voltage level right over here so we have a positive vol reference voltage level you know, denoted by VREF and um, over here we're gonna get yeah the output so the output would just you know uh, be at the positive saturation voltage level till the moment that uh, VI is just less than that of the reference voltage level that's still this much so to the left of this uh, blue dashed line the output would remain at the positive saturation voltage level so that's here and uh, it would just you know swing back to the negative saturation voltage level when VI would be equal to that of VREF okay the, the reference voltage and uh, at you know regular intervals as you can see from the dashed lines 
the output would just you know change its state uh, you know uh, transiting from the positive to the negative saturation voltage levels okay uh, continuously so what we see here is that in case of a normal open loop comparator there is only a single reference voltage level but in case of the uh, Schmidt trigger there are two reference voltage levels now the two reference voltage levels okay uh, being given by VF1 and VF2 respectively where of course VF1 is you know greater in magnitude to that of VF2 so basically that for I mean for this reason VF1 is referred to as the upper threshold okay so there you go upper threshold or uh, reference voltage and VF2 is referred to as the lower threshold okay or reference voltage okay so there we go um, now we have here that uh, the uh, there are you know two threshold or in you know, a reference voltages and the, as that in case of this uh, Schmidt trigger circuit and now the uh, circuit symbol of the Schmidt trigger is given as somewhat like this as you can see over here so it just uh, resembles the symbol of a voltage buffer okay along with that there is uh, this uh, sign on it I mean on the symbol that resembles somewhat like an S but this sign is actually not an S, okay? It's actually uh, the representation of the hysteresis phenomena that occurs in case of this Schmidt trigger circuit, okay? So now if we have uh, that, uh, okay, let's say this is basically the um, positive saturation voltage level, okay? So that's plus V set, and this is basically the negative saturation voltage level, that's minus V set. So we have the output voltage, you know, if uh, we have, uh, or rather, you know, just plot the output voltage level on the y-axis and the input voltage level on the x-axis, then if we just, uh, okay, let's just check over here, uh, yeah, right. So uh, the case, I mean, uh, if we just take, uh, for example, the case when the um, output, I mean, yeah, output of this uh, Schmidt trigger circuit just transits from uh, the positive saturation voltage level to the negative saturation voltage level. That is, uh, let's just have, okay, on the x-axis as the input voltage levels, a, uh, this as, uh, okay, let's just take this as VF1, that's the upper threshold, and let's just take this as VF2, that's the lower threshold voltage. Okay, so during uh, this case, basically, what happens is that now whenever the uh, input voltage you know goes on increasing 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 and just equalizes to that of the upper threshold voltage level it just you know swings i mean the output just swings to the negative saturation voltage level as you can see over here and again uh, when the um, basically the output okay whenever the output again you know uh, just um, I mean, sorry, the input voltage again, you know, just uh, increases in magnitude and uh, just increase, I'm mean, sorry, decreases in magnitude. Sorry, just uh, apologize for my mistake over there. So uh, when the output, I mean, the input voltage applied to this uh, Schmidt trigger circuit just, you know, decreases in magnitude and it just keeps on decreasing, decreasing, decreasing till it reaches the uh, reference level, I mean, the lower reference or the threshold level, VF2, the output just, you know, suddenly swings to the positive saturation voltage level. So as you can see over here, this, uh, um, loop over here represent or rather resembles the uh, magnetic hysteresis loop in magnetic circuits so therefore this is basically uh, referred to as the hysteresis phenomena or uh, the hysteresis loop in case of Schmidt trigger so this is a very important property of the Schmidt trigger and this hysteresis voltage okay over here is just given by the difference between uh, the uh, two threshold levels so that's there that's the hysteresis voltage okay so now you can also uh, other than the just uh, you know grounding this terminal we can also you know keep this terminal at a reference voltage vr and if we do that then the uh, you know the uh, magnitude of this feedback voltage just be you know changed or rather altered a little bit okay along with the term that we had over here as you can see okay, let me just show you a bit more clearly over here as you can see for the feedback voltage in this example we would have another you know additive term due to this uh, reference voltage VR that's being applied over here in addition to the output voltage VO so it'll be VR R2 by R1 plus R2 in this case so this is basically uh, the uh, expression for the feedback voltage given to the non-inverting input of the op amp okay due to the presence of both vo and vr so if we just you know try and put the necessary values of the vr that we want to select okay and the in the values of the r1 r2 and the output voltage assuming it at the uh, once at the positive saturation and then at the negative saturation then we could obtain our uh, you know uh, our um, yeah the upper and the lower threshold voltage levels respectively so now uh, the uh, 
magnitude of this hysteresis voltage I just forgot to show you over here is just given by the expression that 2 R1 V set and the, uh, that's the uh, positive saturation voltage level by R1 plus R2. So this is basically uh, the expression for the uh, mathematical expression that is for the uh, hysteresis voltage that's basically the difference between the upper and the lower threshold voltages. Okay, So if we just you know uh, now um, I mean, I just come to this uh, point where we had, you know, just uh, uh, summarized all the necessary uh, things that you'd like to know or uh, require to know for a Schmidt trigger circuit operation. And I'd like to just finally point out that the Schmidt trigger is, of course, you know, much more superior to that of a normal open loop comparator due to the fact that it just employs, you know, positive feedback, which makes it, you know, much faster in operation, you know, transiting from the positive to the negative saturation voltage levels and apart from that it also you know helps filter out noises okay and that's why it's a preferred choice in case of sensor based circuits where uh, noises are a very common phenomena so it just uh, you know uh, if we just you know, adjust these upper and lower threshold voltage levels to uh, something you know larger than that of the noise voltage levels then the noises would just be you know filter out from the output of i mean produced by uh, a Schmidt trigger circuit so that's why uh, since it provides you know better filtering and it's much faster okay that's why it's also i mean obviously a preferred choice in case of most of the sensor based circuits so having said that we just you know uh, summarize our discussion right over here on schmidt triggers don't forget to watch us on the next tutorial on op amps so till then is a thank you for now and goodbye